morning to you all and welcome to another session sea fishing with Paul. I'm down at Seaford again um, because the dear old government lockdown says I have to go to a local beach and this is probably one of the nearest to um, where I live easy enough to get to I have to say. But the bit I was going to fish is Sod's Law. There are these big like digger things moving shingle and it's really noisy and I'm sure that noise kind of goes through down into the seabed and must disturb the fish I would have thought and like last time I have swimmers to contend with which um, you'll see very very shortly but see very calm little overcast very still hardly any breeze at all so really don't know what um, I might winkle out today but I've got some fresh lug so I'm going to have a crack with that and I'm going to keep it nice and simple. I'll take you through the uh, rigs very shortly that I'm going to use. Catch up in two ticks. ready to fish. Rigs, going to keep them nice and simple today. This was taught to me by an old fellow in a shop when I was a teenager, which was 40 plus odd years ago. But very simple really, cut the beads, um, little barrel swivel in the middle, stop knot on the bottom, down to the line, clipped on a um, 170 ounce weight with two um, hook panel rig on it. And I've got a whole squid, which I've attached a couple of um, fresh prawns to, whipped them on and then pedaled it up, clipped it on. Other one, similar, um, 170 ounce, probably don't need it, break away given the state of the sea today. Two fresh lug on there and a single hook. And then I will fish a third rod which will be a um, fixed bull. On these two rods, I've got multipliers. I've got 60 pound shock leader, 20 pound main line, and then similar on the fixed bull, I've got one of these bullet um, triggers on it. Stops you getting all your skin ripped off your fingers. And I've got a mate of mine, he'd be down here probably about 11. He outfished me last time, I have to say, so it's game on today and I'm going to get these rods out and then get the third rod chucked out there and I'll keep you posted. Right, the sun's coming out and I'm getting a little warm. Um, I think I'm going to move the tripod a little further down the beach. I'm going to leave my stuff up here as the tide inevitably will come back in. I can't be asked to lug it backwards and forwards. All I need is a seat and some bait. And who said fishing was an exercise? I'm bloody goonered walking up and down that really steep shingle. And those bloody trucks are still doing their truck stuff, dumping and clanking and making noise. Now, two rods out, one to go, 150 ounce weight, um, slightly smaller than the others, keeping it simple. Two hook flapper rig, one down, one up, no clips, just gonna buzz it out, fairly short. See what's um, zinging around out there, never know, might um, pick up um, well, anything really here. And the swimmers are still here, they haven't gone yet. You'd think that, uh, 
they sort of figure out that I've got fishing lines going out in front of me and they, the beach to my right is completely empty and the beach to my left is completely empty but they're swimming just to the left of me. What is all that about? One bag I think I'm going to bring down is the food bag. I'm now a little bit hungry so I'm going to do myself a sausage, maybe some bacon, some mm, ketchup I think today, a roll and a nice cup of coffee so I'm going to go and get that whizzed up. In fact I'm going to bring the bag down here I think and then I can sit here, watch the cooking, forget about the world for a few moments and be really thankful that the government um, did actually allow us to go fishing which is brilliant I have to say so big up the government on that but hopefully they realize it's good for people's mental well-being and there's quite a few of us who fish uh, I think there's over 8 million people or something quite phenomenal but that's obviously all types um, I'm just a bonkers obsessive fisherman kind of come back to sea fishing after a little bit of a rest really focused on course fishing but love it I have to say and always think of my uncle when I come down here he was a, a charming chap although he had one or two uh, vices bless him and he sort of taught me everything I know really and got me into it and as obsessed as he was and we sort of went all over the world we fished in um, the Indian Ocean. That was many, many years ago, but um, yeah, God rest his soul. And I do think of him often, I have to say. It would appear I have a little bit of a bite on my nearest rod, just the faintest of little taps. Now that could be crabs, it could be something else, but there's always that you never know. And we've all felt that, haven't we? We're sitting here going, I wonder what it is. Do I really it in now? Do I strike at it? Do I let it uh, go a little longer? I think I'm just going to let it go a little longer and if anything happens, guys out there, I'll uh, record it. Right boys and girls, not the most spectacular of fish, but a little itty bitty bass, um, which is going to go right back right now without me spiking myself, because even the itty bitty ones are spiky little sods, and he's sticking all these little bits out, and it's extraordinary that such a little itty bitty fish took a bloody great hook, but I could see that he was a banging and a doing, so uh, let's get him back. The coffee has been made and the sausages and the bacon are sizzling. There's something um, very childish isn't there about coming down and making fire on a beach but I really like doing it. It seems far nicer than bringing uh, 
sandwiches and always tastes so much better on the beach than it does at home. I don't know why. It would seem that dogs are magnetically drawn towards cooking. Soslaw, completely empty. He's going, oh yes, I would like some bacon, I would like some sausage. Okay, so the scratching rig, bottom hook, completely stripped, top hook, nearly stripped, and I would think it's probably our little friends, the uh, crabs out there, but uh, not to be deterred, I'll get it baited up and I'll buzz it out there again. Behind me you can see uh, my beach buddy and uh, he turned up about 20 minutes ago and then this other gentleman turned up and uh, wanted to talk about all things fishing just when I was about to eat my roll. So I put my roll on the top of um, the freezer box, was chatting to him, then he went well I've got to go because it's looking a little rainy so I went to grab all my stuff from further up to find that the crow had come down and taken my roll. The bastard crow. So I'm gonna to have to do another one shortly. But they're cheeky sods, aren't they? Um, I had a couple of other itty bitty um, whiting. I had a tiny, tiny little pouting, an embarrassing pouting, and a tiny, tiny uh, pin whiting. Not really worth taking a photograph of. Uh, got a tap on the other rod. So I'm going to go and have a look at now and uh, is there anyone there worth showing guys? You'll see it shortly. Thank goodness for a beach shelter. Um, really good this shelter I have to say. It um, is a beach buddy style but you can uh, either heighten it or lower it and it's very easy to put up. A load of rain has just come through and I got it up in less than five minutes. Probably less than four minutes I have to say. Just unclips, legs out, skirt out, stones on the skirt, little bit on the top here to pull out the, the front of it and I'm sitting in here all nice, toasty and dry, but the rain has now stopped. <laughs> Bloody sod's law, but looking over there there may be a bit more rain so I'm going to keep this up and uh, ready and I'm just going to go and check my rods now. There's always that you never know. Let's go and have a look. Nothing. No bait. That will be why I wasn't getting any bite. You stupid boy. Now I'm not advertising these, but I can't sing their praises highly enough. I've got like a beach brolly, which I use when it's not too windy, and then this little chap which is uh, an IMAX um, storm shelter. Really easy to put up, as I said earlier on. Um, just lay it on the beach if it's really windy, chuck a load of stones around the skirt and then just push it up. Legs adjust, but really can't fault it. Um, get in there with a tilly lamp, gets all toasty at night. Lovely. Now, great speculation between me and Ross. The rod that's the second one in from my left hand side is that a bite? I think I need to find out. He's telling me it's a crab, but we'll find out. No, that looks definitely like a bite. Let's have a see. But no fish, and I've just had a bird's nest. 
I've been fishing all these years and you'd think I would know how to cast by now. A few people have asked me how I rig up my uh, panel rigs. So first what you need is you need a coat hanger. So the ones that you get out of the dry cleaners or similar with a little kink in the end. And then you cut them so they're like a pair of tweezers. Boop, boop, boop. And then what you do is to rig this one I put a squid on one side and then prawns so they're straight to the other side. Whip on the squid, whip on the prawns. Then um, hook the bottom hook in, whip that on, hook the top hook, don't bother whipping that on, clip it down. And then all you do is you just grab hold of this, out it comes, all rigged up, ready to go out there, juices flowing. And um, it's already come back. I think the crabs have just been eating and eating and eating because it was stripped and just the bait elastic left. But not to be deterred, I'm going to get it back out there again because there's always that you never know moment. And out there amongst all the small fish, there has to be a big fish. We will find out. Such a contrast in the weather. There is a chap a little further up going for a swim. The sun is out, the sky is blue. I've got far too many clothes on because it was quite chilly earlier on and I'm a little overdressed, I have to say, for this. But the tide, it's now quarter to one, so I've fished the tide. High tide was six this morning. Tide's been going out, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Slack for an hour, it's now coming in. So we're fishing the tide up, so I'll probably fish till maybe four and then clutter off home. I think it's, again, one of those days we're not hauling out fish. I've got three rods out, Ross has got three rods out, and um, he's had nothing. I've had bait stripped, and a total of three fish so far, all itty bitty, teeny weeny. All the gear, no idea. Um, looks good on the beach with the various bits out and the reels gleaming in the late evening. But no bloody fish. Beautiful evening, mind you. Um, and the countdown begins. We've got probably 45 minutes left and my mate Ross keeps saying as soon as we leave all the fish will be biting. But there comes a point when you just got to go, you know what, give up another day. The eccentricity of the British. The man has just come out of the sea. He went for a bit of a paddle and I think he got a little bit more than he um, kind of bargained for with the crazy mutt who's dug a hole, as one does. But beautiful, beautiful evening. But I want more fish. In two days time I'm planning to go to the Isle of Grain fishing which is on the Thames estuary. The only downside to that is I've just looked at the weather forecast and they're saying 30 mile an hour upwards south westerlies. But having looked at the local Thames forecast the wind will be from behind us and will be 15 miles an hour. So I'm still going to go I think, um, wind permitting. Life's starting to go, a few more blokes are turning up. What's he going to fish into the night? I kind of got to be in the right humour for night fishing. And tonight's probably not the night. Been here all day, getting a bit knackered, and uh, 
bit of a journey home. Finally exonerated. Um, this actually is a bit of a beezer of a place. Uh, here it is. And uh, this most definitely is a keeper. Um, I was starting to think all those years that I've been fishing, all that experience, and you lot out there are going to think the bloke is a complete pillock. Uh, and you would have been right. So uh, I just had a stonk of a bite. I'm sorry I didn't get it on camera, but I thought, I wonder what the hell that is. So when you get a fish like this, what generally tends to happen is you think, you know what? I'm gonna have another go for some more plates. So I might change the uh, trace that I've got on, put a few beads on and uh, get back out there. So uh, yeah, all excited now, I have to say. Um, I can feel my little heart going grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr